Although this seems really sweet, did you know that sleeping like this could potentially result in nerve damage? Yesterday, I presented the case of a 34-year-old man who came to the emergency department with acute onset of pain in the back of his arm and associated numbness and tingling in the same distribution. And what scared him the most is that he was experiencing a wrist drop in his left hand where he could extend his wrist normally in his right hand, but this wrist just hung down straight like this and he couldn't extend it. He was kind of worried that it may be having a heart attack or even a stroke. After further questioning, he's a healthy guy, no past medical history, and takes no medications. In fact, the only thing new in his life is he just moved in with his girlfriend who lives in an older home. On physical examination, he did have decreased sensation in the radial nerve distribution, which is shown here on the back of the arm, radiating all the way into the back of the hand. And he also had significant weakness in wrist extension, which is also supplied by the radial nerve, demonstrating all the muscles the radial nerve supplies right here, including many of the extenders of the hand. He had no associated neck pain and it was only affecting one hand. And I gave you the differential diagnosis of three different possibilities. One being a pinched nerve in the neck, two being something called honeymoon palsy, and the third being lead poisoning. So let's go through each of them and the answer to this patient's diagnosis. He has something called honeymoon palsy or radial nerve palsy. It gets its name from honeymooners and this type of sleeping position where a person's head will rest in the other person's armpit area and compress the radial nerve. Remember, I said he just moved in with his girlfriend. Here is the anatomical course of the radial nerve and you can see that right in here, the nerve is superficial and can be subjected to compression. And you may have also heard it go by Saturday night palsy or crutch palsy. And they get the name for the same phenomenon. Here, if it's a Saturday night, maybe you've had a little bit too much to drink, you drape your arm over a chair and fall asleep, it can lead to compression of the radial nerve. And similarly, use of crutches can cause prolonged pressure on the radial nerve and lead to a radial nerve palsy as well. So if you want to call it honeymoon palsy, Saturday night palsy, crutch palsy, it all means the same thing in which the patient will have decreased sensation in the distribution of the radial nerve as well as an acute wrist drop. So how do we make the diagnosis? Well, most times you can make it by a thorough, detailed clinical history and physical examination. And I won't get on my soapbox about this, but sometimes physicians don't do a good job of getting a good history, talking to their patients, or even doing a good detailed physical examination. If you do those things, you really probably don't need any more testing. If you suspect after a good physical examination that the patient indeed does have an isolated radial nerve palsy, you could ask him, hey bro, is your girl sleeping in your armpit? And if he says, yeah, she has been, well, you probably have your diagnosis. But I gave you two other trick diagnoses, which theoretically could also be the case, so let's talk about why they're not that. If he did indeed injure a disc in his cervical spine, which was pinching a nerve and causing that pain radiating down his arm, it will likely be associated with neck pain. And usually the patient will have to hold their arm above their head like this to get relief. I can't tell you how many times I walk in a room with a patient with an acute disc herniation and they're just hanging out with their arm above their head and I can walk in and make the diagnosis. It's actually because if you hold your arm in this position, it takes the pressure off the nerve and makes the pain much better. Maybe if you're unsure, you could always get a cervical spine MRI to rule out a pinched nerve in the neck. Now, what about the lead poisoning? I did say he moved into an older house and lead poisoning can lead to toxic neuropathy and wrist drop. It's because of the toxic effects on the lead and the myelin sheath that leads the nerves to not be able to relay signal as well. So you can get a wrist drop. But I said that only one wrist was not working well. And in lead poisoning, almost always it's bilateral wrist drop because the lead wouldn't choose which particular nerve. It usually affects both. In fact, lead poisoning is also associated with abdominal pain and anemia. So a simple blood test may help you rule out that as well. Lead poisoning impairs the heme synthesis in our red blood cells and we don't produce as many. So that leads to the anemia. There is also a blood test to check for the levels of lead.
So we made the diagnosis of honeymoon palsy. Now what? We love it in medicine when, when something causes something, you just stop doing that and it should get better, right? Well, yeah. So don't let your girl sleep in your armpit. In all seriousness, if it is a compressive neuropathy, you intervene, most of these will resolve within a few weeks. In some cases, it can even take four to six months. Supporting the wrist in a brace and physical therapy are very important in the recovery process. An EMG or a nerve conduction test can also help you make the diagnosis, but it really won't show nerve damage until four to six weeks out from the original inciting event. That's because of Wallerian degeneration and if you know, you know. There are many other causes of wrist drop, including bony fractures, elbow dislocations, casts, occupational injuries, and even arthritic conditions. No means is what I am saying fully comprehensive of all the reasons. In rarer cases that don't recover of a compressive neuropathy, an MRI may be indicated and even nerve exploration. In our case, we made the diagnosis, found the inciting incident, corrected his sleep positioning, and he had full resolution of his symptoms in six weeks. So think twice if you want to snuggle up in your lover's arm. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care? Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.